Howdy folks, this is Troy with V-Twins the V8s. I'm coming on today to do a short little video on how to assemble rear disc brakes on a Chrysler 8 and 3 quarter. I'm doing a project for a guy and I'm uh, getting a lot of different parts, a lot of different companies and different kits for brakes and suspension and everything. And each company gives you their version of what it's supposed to look like when it's done, their directions. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good. And uh, I got these this brake kit, and it's kind of a, it's for the Mopar 8 and 3 quarter, but it seems to be somewhat universal. And the instructions were, were pretty vague. So I just wanted to come on, do a really short video, and just kind of show you what it looks like. That's the big thing for me. I'm a visual guy. You show me a picture of what something's supposed to look like and dump all the pieces on the floor, I'll put it together. You give me three paragraphs of a story about how it goes together and not much else, I'm going to go look for a picture to see what it looks like when it's done and do it my way. And that's kind of what I had to do with this, was I, I searched around to try and see what the end result was supposed to be so I could figure out if I'm thinking of it the right way. And I had a hard time trying to really find anything that, that showed you what to do. So without a lot more bullshit, I'm going to bring the camera over here and I'm going to show you the... Uh, the way it goes together and how I did. Okay, so here's my Dodge 8 and 3 quarter. I got a new housing, new axles. I fabbed up the housing to run this uh, four link. And then this is the brake system that they give you. Now, when you get all of these brackets, it's kind of a thing where you, you're kind of wondering what goes on. There's a circular piece that goes, see if I can get a good look at right here. It goes on the housing first. That simulates your your drum brake backing plate. Okay, once you get that on, then you put your axle on. I'm assuming you know how to do that. Then there's the second bracket that goes on top of the axle flange. You'll see it right here. Now this bracket has got a slot in it. This is the bottom. It drops down over. Here's one side of it. Here's the other side of it. All right, so they give you this bracket here. This bracket bolts right through the axle flange. There's two bolts here. There's two bolts on the other side. These are your factory, these are in the factory rear end holes, but these are bolts that they give you. There's a third bolt on the bottom that doesn't go through the bracket that just goes through, that holds the axle on. That's your original bolt that you took out when you took your axles out. So there's not enough bolts when they first give this to you, you think, because this is the way it's got to work, but that's what they do. So four bolts from your original, four bolts from your kit, one bolt from your original. So you get this bolted on here, and then you've got your bracket that holds your caliper. Now it goes towards the back, so it's the caliper itself is probably around, I don't know, maybe at the 10 o'clock position, you got your bolts, you got a set of four spacers, put your bolts through, it will go through with the axle here. I know some people, you know, you do have to tap it a little bit, but it will skin by. Throw your bolts through, get your um, spacers that they give you on there, put your nuts and your washers on, and then you'll be able to put your rotor on and then your caliper on, and you should have the proper clearance. This has already been together. I'll put it together and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Okay, so here's my rotor. I'm going to put my rotor on here. I had to paint these rotors because they came, they came bare steel and I didn't want it to rust and be visible with scaly rust behind my aftermarket wheels that are probably going to be open and show these. Okay, so I got my rotor on here. I've put a couple of nuts on there so the rotor is sitting flush to the axle. Now if you can see, I got plenty of clearance between my rotor and my bracket that holds the caliper and then there's my caliper bracket there. Um, now I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the caliper and I'll put the caliper on and I'll show you what that looks like. As you can see I can basically put this whole thing together with my fingers Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see it now. This is the way it should look. And then you can see my rotor is nice and true to my caliper and my bracket. And then this is my emergency brake going forward. Okay, 
So now I've got my rotor is on here. My brakes are nice and loose. My rotor will turn freely. This is a pausey, so it's kind of hard to turn. Turns nice and freely when I turn it. So I'm running true, nothing's binding, everything's in alignment, everything looks right. So I'm gonna do the other side, then I'll show you the brake lines. Bring the camera over here. Okay, so now you have the same exact thing on this side. My pads are, um, let's see if I turn it like this, probably be easier for you. My pads are free in here. That'll fix itself once you have some brakes and it'll put a little bit of tension in there so you won't have any rattling. And I can turn my yoke and my rotor turns freely. Nothing is binding or rubbing on anything. And that's pretty much it for that. Now I'll show you the brakes. So the brake setup, I had to move my junction block because of my brackets I had to weld on for the four link. So this is where the original block went. So I plugged that off. I got a new block here in a new location with my vent, my vent holding it on there. I made these brake lines. They give you these brackets um, to mount. I What I did was I, I drilled holes in the housing and I threaded them and then I sealed them and then I thread locked these in. Then you've got your line, you know, you make your own brake line from here to here. I did that on both sides. And then you run your line from here out to your, um, out to your, ca out to your caliper. I'm gonna bolt these on and uh, you can take a look at that and then that'll be pretty much it. So when you bolt these brake lines on, you wanna make sure it's a banjo style fitting. You wanna make sure you've got a, a washer on either side of the banjo. So this is your bolt. You've got copper washer on the bolt. This goes through the line. You put another washer on the back side of your line, another washer on the back side of your line, and it goes onto the caliper. Once again, this should screw right together, no binding. You should be able to put this thing together with your fingers. That one there all set. Come over here. Do this one right here. So I got my bolt. I got a washer. Put it in there. Put my washer on the other side. Put my line up on here. My jack stand is pretty cool and it moves quite freely. So I got them set up so they turn in like this. So it's so I got plenty, it's all tucked in nice, so I don't have to worry about my big wheels on here. I don't have to worry about it hitting anything. And that's it. So that's what you got for brakes. Goes like that, comes off of there, goes over to here, to your junction block, comes down there. There's your other pad, your other caliper rather. These are your emergency brakes. You run your cables off of here. Your cable goes in here, your housing. Your end goes on there. That's your caliper setup. This is where your hose from your frame rail or body, whatever your application may be, goes in here. And um, that's pretty much it. Okay, folks, so, so that's it for my video for the Mopar 8 and 3 quarter disc brake conversion. The Ford is going to be pretty much identical, actually all of them. It's uh, going to be very similar. GM's probably going to be a little bit different um, because you you got to get inside the rear end. I, I didn't get into the whole taking the rear end apart and the axles. That's a whole other project. I just really wanted to show the sequence of the brackets and what they look like. So if somebody else is out there like me that's done this stuff a million times and doesn't need a step-by-step -step type of thing, you just want a short and sweet thing, there's the pictures. This is what it looks like when it's done. That's what I did. So I'm Troy Kane. The website is vtwins to v8s.com. I'm on Facebook, vtwins to v8s.com. And I'm on YouTube as Troy Kane. Obviously, you found me because uh, you're watching this YouTube video. I appreciate you tuning in. Tuning in. If you uh, have any questions, leave me a message. I'll try and get back to you. I'm usually pretty good about it. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much. And subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to the point where I can have some, some kind of a client base as well. So uh, thank you very much.